Sylvain, please tell us uh, how did you start your basketball journey? Uh, what age? When? Where? You know, all that. Well, I started my basketball journey actually. You know, I started. I mean, uh, two years old. Two years old. I was it. I really played basketball when I was like four years old, actually. And it was really a uh, in the in the playground. You know, in the playground with my brothers and all that. That's the way I started. And I grew up with uh, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Allen Iverson, and uh, on the street ball too. You know, and one like a lot of people know. I feel like that's everyone that want to be a good dribbler. That's where you usually see with it, all the M1 players, like the Professor, uh, the Hot Sauce, and all that. So yeah, I fell in love with basketball. Then uh, I started, you know, uh, being in a club when I was actually only 12 years old. So I started really, really late to be in a club. And uh, and yeah, and after that, I mean, by like 8, 10, I went to a club. It was really like my, my, my brother's friend that wanted me to be there. So that's how I started. But most of the time, yeah, and uh, I went to the state in high school. That's how I really I get formed because in France, all the trial, the test that I did, no matter team, they was telling me we cannot pick him up because this game was too American and uh, I was too short. And uh, the thing is, I was doing good in all the tests. So after that, you know, my brother just sent me to the state in high school and I did. I had a great, great years over there. You know, I didn't go to college because my first year, uh, my grades was really bad when I was in France. Uh, throughout to, uh, I grew up in an environment really, really bad. So that was like the most dangerous city in France that I went and uh, that I was, especially the school. <clears throat> I had to have my family and I couldn't really go to school because of, you know, uh, people from other cities that was coming to the school shooting and all that so it was kind of like scary and yeah so they told me to go uh, the rest of one year go to JUCO or to go to NCAA and NCAA I had all the top schools besides Kentucky and Duke and I was supposed to sign at Kansas University actually where Joel and Bede were and uh, yeah they told me the rest and I'll play the first year and uh, play the second year I didn't try to do that the thing is I was trying to go one and done go one and one year and go to the nba so i was like all right let me just go to professional to see if it works so i play in uh, metropolitans the whole the team where i think the one banyama played before I get drafted that's why i were i was i had to try for one month and i was like if it doesn't work at least i i have a plan b and plan c to go back to the state and it worked, and that's how I start my professional career, you know, so yeah. Um, even though, uh, you know, even though you're not the highest player on, uh, with the, the biggest height on the floor, you know, on the basketball floor, you can definitely high, uh, rise high and dunk the ball. Uh, I've seen a couple of your dunks, uh, and being your size, it looks really impressive. How did you develop such bounce, and do you still surprise people with your dunks? Uh, to be honest, uh, my whole family is really athletic. My brothers jump a lot, jump really high over me. <clears throat> and I think uh, for me, yeah, every time I wanted a dunk, my first dunk was at 17 years old. I was really, really short. I think I was like, what, 175. That was my first dunk that I have, and I dunk in the game too. So yeah, I never really, you know, work on it, but every time after the practice, I was always trying to dunk, 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 it never happened. Then I had to do, you know, windmill between the legs and all that, I had this. And I feel like <clears throat> I'm still surprising people, but you know, the past year when I was in, uh, in uh, what should we call it, in uh, Bayern Munich, I really had some problem with my knee a little bit. So it just, you know, took off 30% uh, of my athleticism. So it was kind of hard for me. Then I got injured and uh, and now I'm getting better. So it was like, to be honest, it's been like a year I re didn't really dunk, jump like that. And now where we was in uh, Turkey, I had uh, a warm up and I finally dunk. So it means like, you know, my legs is coming back. My knees are way better than before, way better. So I'm just like, okay, like in the game, probably somebody gonna get surprised, you know? <laughs> uh, you played with uh, Victor Vembanyama on his debut night with the French uh, national team here in Lithuania and Panevergis. How do you recall this special night for French basketball that you got 
to, to be a part of? Man, I'm, I'm just happy to be part of it because it's really, you know, it, it, I'm not going to say it depends. Like any players that play for his country, for him, it means a lot, you know, to be involved, to be with Wemby at this time because I knew Wemby since he was young. And to be me and him together was like something special, you know, especially when everybody wanted to see him and how he was playing. And you can see how uh, better he is now compared, he was already good, but now he's like top of that. So yeah, to have like a, you know, to play with him, it makes things easier. And uh, I'm really, you know, happy for him to, you know, to be in the NBA, be a rookie of the year and uh, be second on the national, on the Olympics actually. Uh, you also played the same year against uh, Vilnu uh, Ritas Vilnius in the Basketball Champions League. Uh, you lost both both of those games with Peristeria. What do you remember from from that time? Has it given you you know a glimpse of what awaits here in Lithuania in, in the in the uh, local league? Oh yeah, definitely. Ritas was actually a good team. I think most of the players were staying for a long time, so they knew each other. The only thing for us we were missing it was a little we was less athletic than them, you know. And I feel like that that was really a good team. And uh, and yeah, for me, it was, I was kind of mad about <laughs> against them every time back and forth, we lost twice. That was my enemy team. I was like, I wish I can see them again in Champions League and beat them. By the end of the day, you can tell like, it's a good uh, team. And I feel like it, they really uh, represent the Lithuania local league team, which is good. You know, you got Zalgiris, you got them. And uh, you got BC Wolves too in Euro League and Euro Cup actually. So for me, I feel like you know the Euro, Euro Lithuanian League is, is stepping up because I know a lot of players that I know that sign here in the, any team. So that, that's a good thing. That's this is on the map. Uh, you were coached by Vasilis Panoulis in Peristeri for for one year. Uh, what did you manage to learn from this legend? <clears throat> Man. <clears throat> Do you wow. have some of his game in your game? Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Especially like I been have the side step because me for me all the step backs and everything like this all like all my games. But his side step, I remember when I did it at the buzzer beater, he was like, "Yeah, you have my, you stole my move right now." I'm like, "Yo, I've been doing this." He was like, "I've been doing this before you." I was like, <laughs> I start laughing because we had a great relationship. And uh, he's the type of guy that really, he's one of the best coach and people doesn't know, but when he gonna come in your league, or I can see him in the NBA actually, cause I love the way, like I love play with him. And uh, like I said, he really remember my mentality. That's what I always say. Cause all the assistant coaches would tell me, you see the way he is as a coach? That was the same guy as a player. And that's kind of scary. You know how he was as a player, as a coach. He's just telling me a lot of things. And one thing he told me, he said, I always got it in my mind. He told me, he said, no, look, Sil, you're going to be one of the best players if you keep working, keep listening. And uh, when you play with your instinct, you're a million dollar player. But when you think you're average player, just think about it. Nobody can stop you when you play with your instinct. And that's true because I feel like he said you can do everything. Create, you know, create for you, create for all the teams, for all the players and make everybody happy. And that's what you usually do though. Don't lose this. Nobody can take this from you. And, uh, and for me to do the say that really means a lot, you know, and yeah, that's the main uh, sentence that I always keep it to my mind when I'm trying to have a game or I'm doing like, I started bad and I'm just, you know, rethink about myself and rethink about a lot of things. Achu, kad jurei, pasimatisime arenose.